right. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Martin. It's a pleasure to be here. I am a creative director at GMMB in Washington, D.C. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, we were asked by U.S. News & World Report last week, about a month ago, really, to um, take on the challenge of how we would rebrand STEM. And as I went through this, I started looking at all the work that was out there, and my first question was, why are we rebranding it? It was never really branded in the first place. It kind of was just given to everyone, and everyone kind of ran with it. Um, I have been doing, uh, if you haven't, well, first of all, I don't know how many people know what a creative director is, and I don't know how many people actually watch Mad Men, but as a creative director, I, uh, my job is to create brand stories and personalities that make an emotional connection with the audience that we're, in, you know, that we're targeting. Um, unlike Don Draper, I don't drink that much during the day, okay? <laughs> um, that show, really, I wish I was there when that was happening, that was crazy. But, um, so for most of my career, I have been branding and working with youth-oriented brands. So I've actually gotten pretty good at finding my inner teenager. And um, this is something you have to do. And we're going to talk about this a lot as we kind of move forward because, you know, for us to actually have a message that gets through the bubble, we actually have to understand what's in the bubble. And we have to know what's relevant to them. And that's really important because, as you will see, um, when you don't do that, not a lot gets through, and you guys know this as well as anybody. Um, a little bit about GMMB, um, as was mentioned, we, we work with um, cause marketing. We're a cause advocacy marketing uh, firm in the US, and we work with everybody from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that we do a lot of education with, to um, Johnson & Johnson and their, philanth uh, their philanthropy work, to um, the Dave Thomas Foundation, to American Lung Association, it's a really broad range of work. And our goal and our mission is to create change in the world. And so we try to partner with people that we can actually help us achieve that goal. So before we get into, uh, I'm gonna make sure this clicker works, before we get into talking about brand, branding, let's talk about brands. Because it's important that we all understand what branding is. So that we're all, you know, when I'm explaining something that we, you know, we didn't start from the wrong sheet of music. So brands, obviously, we're, we're surrounded by brands all the time. I guarantee every one of you are wearing at least two or three right now. You wake up in the morning, you, you have your brand coffee, you put on your brand clothes, you get in your brand car, and you drive down the street to possibly a brand job and pick up another cup of brand coffee on the way. So we're surrounded by brands. They're all over the place. But branding lives between your ears. Branding is the personality that is associated with those brands. And that's what someone like me and advertising agencies do, is we create personalities that hopefully you will make um, some kind of emotional connection with. And a lot of the times, these brands end up being a reflection of you. Because if you think about it, we're all walking brands, in a way. I mean, we have, you know, people know what we are about. And, uh, and so in branding and in marketing, perception is reality. The truth is in there, but it's what people think about you that sticks. And that's why companies and advertising agencies are paid by you know, corporations to make sure that the branding for these, uh, their different products and, and things that are out there is so good and it's so you know, well taken care of. Another way to look at it is branding is what people say about you when you leave the room. You thought they were just talking about you. You were, you were being branded. And hopefully, you were being branded in a good, positive light. So one of the things I've learned as far as marketing to teens over the years is and you guys know this, teens don't care about what you're interested in, they care about what they're interested in. And that's really important when you start to think about how you're actually going to speak to them. Because if you're talking to them with this onus on what you think is important, like I think was mentioned earlier, you know, everyone here believes the passion and what we should be doing you know, for STEM and it's a better you know, for the future of the youth and everything. But if you talk like that to them, they don't hear anything, absolutely at all. So one of the challenges that we wanted to do was how do we actually start to speak with them? So I'm going to take you through a little bit of the process that we go through on every one of our projects. And it'll give you a little bit of insight into how this works. This is the stuff you don't see in Mad Men. You just see Don Draper stand up there and come up with some really cool line. And, and then he walks out on clients and they all run after him. So that never happens. <laughs> if you walk out on clients, they're just like, bye. Um, so we look at this as a challenge. And our challenge was how do we brand STEM passionately and make an emotional connection with teens so that they reconsider STEM. Um, and really this comes down to the idea of how do we make them understand we care about their lives. Um, you know, this happens, great brands do this all the time. And they do it so well you don't even know they're doing it. So brands like Apple and Nike and Harley, 
they have figured out a way to create a cultish quality and a connection that connects their products to their audience through a philosophy of belonging. And I say this like, if anybody in here knows anyone that owns a Harley, you know how crazy passionate they are about that thing. I mean, from the, the stuff they wear, they might have the tattoo, and all they talk about is Harley. And that is a club that Harley has created. And everybody that's in it loves it, and they want to be a part of it. And if brands do it right, they have created an ambassador for that brand. That person will talk positively about that brand forever. So that's our challenge. Another brand that really is close to the heart of the youth of America is Red Bull. Now, Red Bull is the number one energy drink in the world. But there are 60 different energy drinks on the market. And I can tell you right now, none of them taste differently. They all kind of taste the same. So why is Red Bull number one? How did they do it? Well, because kids are flocking to Red Bull, not because of the taste or what they do as a product, but because Red Bull gives wings to people and ideas. They give wings to crazy people doing crazy things. But these are the same things that the kids out there love. And so therefore, they are supporting the brand by buying it. So our approach, through some research we did on our own, is to do everything possible to be and look unstem like to attract the teens and disrupt their current perspective. And we have to do it before they reach this critical decision-making period in their lives. So everything they think of us, which they obviously have some preconceived ideas, we have to basically shift it. We have to disrupt it. We have to show them something different, a different side they've never seen. And we want to do it when they're at this point, or at least before this point, when they're around 16, 17, 18 years old. And I say that because there is a trickle-down effect. If you know 16, 17, 18 year olds and they have younger 11, 10, 12 year old siblings, everything their older brother or sister does, they love. So in a way, we're casting a bigger net by actually focusing on the influencers in the teen world. But we're also talking to these influencers, these teens, at a period in their life when they actually are starting to put one and one together and figure out that they have an idea and they, they kind of, you know, are starting to head down a path of career that they want to achieve. So brands do this too. Um, brands have to be relevant to their audience, and their audience is constantly changing. So you can see this. Pepsi's a great, um, they've got a really long, um, great brand story that kind of exemplifies this. You know, at one point it was take the Pepsi taste challenge. Everybody remembers that. They used to do these ads where people would just, you know, they, they'd stop them in the street, and they would, they would say, hey, take, taste this, taste this, and one would be Coke, and one would be Pepsi, and they would be like, oh, I love the Pepsi, it's great. That was awesome, but then their, their market started shifting and then the younger crowd that came in that they wanted to make sure was at the you know, core of their market, they didn't really care so much about the taste challenge. It wasn't that fun, it's kind of boring. So they switched to Michael Jackson and the choice of a new generation. And we remember that, that's when all of a sudden it became not about the taste, it became about just being cool. Then recently, uh, I think it was, like, it was not the last uh, Super Bowl, maybe the one before that, their, their target changed again, so they had to become relevant to them again. So they came up with the Pepsi Refresh Project. And if you remember that, they took all their marketing money that they were going to play, or they were going to use during the Super Bowl, and they gave it to individuals out in America who were going to do good. So totally changed up everything. But that's what they're doing. They're disrupting what people think about them. They're also sometimes disrupting their own conventional way of thinking. You've all heard it, you can't see the forest for the trees. We get in our own way sometimes. We are so close to our own challenges and projects that we don't see a solution that it could be staring us in the face because it's too simple. And that's one of the reasons why they bring in marketing and advertising people. So, how are we gonna, how are we gonna move this forward? We're gonna create a fresh approach teens can own to help them get excited about what still makes possible through the things they like, not the things we like. And we're going to do this in a really cool way because we need to actually connect with them. And this is not a science. And this is fun when you're at the STEM Solutions Conference in Austin, full of a room full of scientists, and go, it's not a science. If it were, it would be a lot easier. It's an art. Yay, art teachers. Um, but it's an art based on human truth. And what was our human truth again? Simple. Teens don't care about what you're interested in. They care about what they're interested in. So how do we connect them to STEM. Funny you should ask. So I thought I'd just get this whole presentation in the middle. Because you know kids got 20 different things going on, so we got to start getting in that mindset. Oh, sorry about that.
Welcome to Branding, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math to Disinterested Teens. A five-step crash course in acting like a teenager once again. Step one, you saw it earlier, the Ignite Eye Project, okay? This is a campaign about students. It's about their hopes, their dreams, their loves, their challenges, their angst. But it's all about life for them, and it's about inspiring them and showing them how STEM is relevant in their lives. How many people here think Nike sells shoes? They don't. <laughs> Nike sells the athlete in you that wishes you were better. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to be an underachiever, okay? Human nature, we all want purpose. We want to do something in life. Nike and a lot of brands have tapped into that. They know that and they are basically betting a lot of money that they can get you to buy their product because they're instilling that in you. This is gonna be our Just Do It, okay? It's about challenging these kids and it's about finding that, that fire that's inside them. It's not all about STEM, it's about life, but it's about how life connects to STEM. Step two, we're gonna get in their physical space. We're gonna create a traveling pop-up poster show. This is a poster show that you can order as a teacher online that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. It can show up at cafes, it can show up in your classroom, in the hall. It's going to be partnered with some of the best young creative silk screeners in the country. These are silk screeners that are already doing silk screen posters for the bands that these kids already love. We are gonna actually create posters and become cool overnight. We are going to have one step closer to getting in their hearts and their heads. Kids are gonna see science put in a different light. And they're gonna walk home with these posters and we're gonna be on their wall. So again, visual reminder, having fun. And this would be a great partnership. You can see already the PR publicity that we could do with this. Step three, we're gonna become a party animal. We're gonna be at festivals, X Games, Warp Tour, Burning Man. Why are we gonna be at these places? Because this is where our audience is hanging out. Again, what was it about? Talking about them, that we let them, we know that we care, we wanna be where they are. And plus, why would we not be at a place where every athlete is creating a STEM movement in action? They are making split second calculations in their head to hit a ramp at a certain speed, get a certain amount of velocity, to pull off a trick and not kill themselves. Plus, they're writing technological innovations. Why would we not connect the dots for kids? They are not seeing this. And if we were there, wouldn't we have a promote, you know, promotions and event stuff? So things like this, big posters that said, if you can defy gravity, people will admire you. If you can explain it, they will hire you. Or this, what makes the world go around? If you said gravitational physics, you're on your way to making a lot more of that other word. So you can see where this would be a lot of fun. And we're doing it again in their tone, in their vision. Step four, we're gonna create an app called STEM Code. Everything these kids buy and touch has a barcode on it. Why would we not have an app that you could scan in, it would tell you the STEM behind that product. Who made it? How they made it? Their inspiration. You could see a video with them. You could see the challenges that they had to go through. You could see all the screw-ups that they went through. It could talk about their career path and how they got to where they are. We could also do targeted student incentives and contests on this. We would be living in their palm. Step five, we're gonna be in their social space. Obviously, we would be in Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, all those kind of places. But why would we also not be in the one place that kids spend almost every weekend? And that would be the movie theaters. So why would we not have our own trailer? In a world where firepower, superpowers, and magic rule, some teens are choosing to take a stand against evil, against the impossible, against the dreaded status quo and minimum wage. They walk among us, fearless, ready to face the unknown, kick some butt, and shape the future with only the power of their brain. Everything we do and everything they see drives back to our website. And right off the bat, for them to even get any further in the website, we're going to challenge them to take a pledge. 
This pledge says, I, Jeff Martin, hereby swear to think big, to be bold, to be young, to be crazy in pursuit of my inner genius. I swear to try new things, ask stupid questions, and make my own inspiration. I will shatter limits, blow off negativity, and tell the status quo to kiss my ass as I push more, learn more, and live more towards becoming more. Nobody said it would be easy, they just said it would be worth it. So damn the naysayers, let's sleep less and do more because good things come to those who freaking earn it. And for them to get into the website, they have to push this out on their social network. They have to, they have to send it out to some place that their friends can see it. They can also print it out. This would be a really cool project because again, we're getting their signature on something they have to commit to, but we've made it kind of cool. This is getting us closer to that philosophy of belonging that we talked about with Harley. We're starting a club. You guys don't get to be in it. They do, but that's the way they want it. So we create a really awesome website that's responsive and worthy of repeat exploration. We take all the things that they love and the things we want them to love and we smash them together. We allow them to see what STEM is in real life. We allow them to see them how it's working in the career. We show them what's going on from school and national level to international level. We relate it back to Iron Man. I mean, we've got to take advantage of where they're living and what they're doing. We give them an idea so they can go and see a little bit more about the Ignite Eye Project in STEM. Again, this is an opportunity really for them to see a little bit of our mission behind it, but it's really an opportunity for corporations and foundations to see what we're doing. Because this allows them to go on and give a sponsorship and contribute. Kids can go on here and see the Ignite Eye staff, which similarly looks a lot like them. And they can get swag. We also give them a clicker. An opportunity to show them the jobs. We show them the money behind the jobs. We show them people that are actually doing the jobs, that are making the money, and we let those people become advocates for us. We have interviews with them, career paths. Again, very, you know, very young, influenced, and very fun. And then we create a study for swag program. Teachers can go online and collect credits. The credits will be donated by foundations and corporations. With those credits, they can give them to kids. Kids can go online and buy t-shirts, hats, posters, the same type of stuff that's created by our visual artists that did it, the posters earlier, but now we're actually having them wear the stuff that we want them to talk about. So what does all this add up to? You know, if we do it right, we'll hopefully ignite kids to ask more questions, to <laughs> be weird, to experiment, to have goals, and to believe they can because they can. That was the presentation that I gave a week ago. And my name's Jeff Martin with GMB. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them now. So, thank you. Questions? I have one. Is this going to happen? Um, you when? know, this was, um, it was really fun in Austin to, uh, to see the passion and the amount of people in the room. Uh, from not only you know educators but government and huge corporations all there for the same purpose and um, afterwards as Marie can assess um, or attest to that um, I probably had 30 different people come up to me and ask me to do this presentation and you guys are the first but I have another one tomorrow in DC and uh, we're hoping that we will get someone to actually bite on this you know we have a, a, Overall, obviously, and again, I think um, you said, uh, Megan, that was a, not a silver bullet. This is not a silver bullet. There are, as you know, a ton of things that still need to happen for this to be a whole marketing push and a movement. But the way I always pre you know, prefaced it with the people I've talked with is you got to start somewhere. You got to start a spark somewhere, and you got to get something going. And why not do it with the crowd that is the one that's the most disinterested? Um, you know. My mom always said, you can't preach to an empty choir. And that's kind of where we are to some extent. And I'm not talking about the kids that already know what they want to do, the ones that are in the center of the bullseye. You know, those kids we already have, OK? What we're talking about are the ones that are on the outside of that, on the fringe, the ones that don't quite know what they want to do, but they have every you know, ability, and, and uh, they just need a little motivation. And they need a little bit of guidance. Those are the ones that we want to affect the most. So, so we'll see.
So any ideas on things until you get this going that we can do in our classroom? I want your posters so bad. Are, are they available yet? Not yet, <laughs> but uh, we have about 20 of them designed already. So that, is, that would be one of the, uh, the first things I would love to get done. And, and that might happen sooner than later because that's really just finding a partner. Um, the website is a big thing because that's really not only a vehicle for um, the students to go to where they live, but there's basically a back door for you guys to get in. And the back door allows you to get credits. It allows you to understand the partnerships and see who's out there, you know, um, look at the different types of careers and who's speaking, you know, who they've actually pulled in to show their career path and how they got there. So in a way, you're privy of it, but, you know, it's their club. And, uh, and so w there's just a little bit of a, you know, they go in the front and you guys have to go in the back. So, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what all happens over the next um, you know, month, I think. And everything seems like it's on a roll. And I was, like I said, the, uh, the STEM uh, Solutions Conference in Austin really was, uh, I thought it was pretty amazing. The, the amount of passion that's in the room is undeniable. But how do we transfer that passion to the kids? And how do we let them own it? And that's, that's something that I just haven't seen uh, a lot of when I look through all the marketing materials that are out there on the web. And there are a lot of them. Um, I think everybody's doing a really good job. They're doing the best they can. But honestly, this was a, an initiative that was started you know, in DC. It turned into an acronym, which everybody in education and the military loves. And then just kind of given to you guys with really no guidance and really no, um, it has a lack of soul to some extent. The soul that I think that is in it is what you guys have put in it, in your own classrooms, in your own areas. But that's not necessarily the way to run a successful, or successful brand. You know, even if you were to buy a franchise, I mean, any franchise, a hamburger franchise, guaranteed you they would tell you exactly how to talk about that franchise and that hamburger and how you make stuff and get, you know, that's how McDonald's is very successful. You can know that you're going to get the same hamburger no matter where you go in the world. And that doesn't happen by accident. So. Ah, questions. Yeah? Good. Jeff, I'm curious about the challenges of branding something like STEM, which, uh, say, as opposed to some of the companies you pointed out, which have been so successful, where they have control of their brand quite a bit. Mm -hmm. STEM is sort of out there, just, you know, it's this amorphous thing, amorphous thing in the public sphere. What would it take to really brand something that has no particular owner? Mm -hmm. um, it would take an owner. That owner might be... Uh, a council, it might be an individual who has a group working with them, but you basically need one of the one of the I guess um, roadblocks that I realized when I was talking to the STEM Advisory Council in in um, Austin was there is no client. <laughs> you know, I mean, I had like there's like 20 people in the room, and they all have great ideas, and they all work for or represent different areas, but there's no single client, and you have to have a single focus or at least a few people. So. Honestly, you would need some small group that understands um, the overall purpose and what we're trying to achieve. And I also feel like that this is one aspect of it. By any means, this, you know, you have, if you were to take three buckets, which I think are truly out there, you have students, you have the organization and teachers, and then you have companies. You know, all three have a vested interest in whether or not this is successful or not. And each one of those might have some threads of continuity as far as like maybe the overall goal behind it. But how you speak and approach each one of those buckets is uh, totally different. You know? So that's something that you would need someone with some type of marketing background that understands. And then they could approach this from a, a pretty strategic point of view. But in the worst case scenario, it would be how do you set up some simple guidelines and then put a, a universal site that people can go to. And they could say, OK, I want to. Uh, get some ideas, uh, grab a couple of logos, and maybe even have those, pros, you know, those posters, 11 by 17 PDF versions of them that you could print out and just put around your classroom and, you know, or something. But I think you would have to start some kind of guide that people could adhere to and at least give them some basic uh, universal pieces and parts. Because one of the aspects I think that, that really helps when you're a brand is continuity. You know, continuity and look and feel, at least somewhere. Um, it's great because it's kind of a grassroots movement, and I think that there, there's a, a lot of power in that. And in this approach, you want the kids to own it, but we still want to give them all the tools they need to actually make it work. So I would say whatever, you know, whatever um, different approach that you went for, you would still want those same basic assets. 
I have a question. If you're a teacher in a school that perhaps you don't have um, necessarily the best support, or maybe you have support at administrative level, but maybe not necessarily with other teachers around you, how would you go about doing this within a single classroom as a starting point? Hmm. Um, the way I would approach it is go back to one of the first things we talked about in the human truths, that kids don't care about what, I, you know, what I'm interested in, they care about what they're interested in. So I would somehow or another figure out how to make STEM relevant based on even, even them going to the movies that weekend. You know, I mean, Iron Man, um, you know, for all, World War Z just opened. Um, you know, it's all of that, you know, they, they, at the end of the movie, they end up, you know, solving that through going, you know, basically injecting himself with, I don't want to tell you, but anyway. <laughs> you thought I was going to, didn't you? <laughs> um, I think it's really just doing stuff like that. I mean, what's relevant in their lives that you can use that they see every day, that they're going to, they're listening to, they're watching on TV. I mean, again, you know, like TV shows like CSI and all these things, they've really taken a scientific approach to this. And when I started actually working on this and really digging into it, and I, you know, I was even putting the, the, the X game and going, why, you know, other than it would just be cool, and I know kids are there, but then when I looked at it and said, oh my God, the kids are defying gravity, and they're actually writing these innovative pieces of work and, that are created by STEM students, I mean, their boards, the, the motorcycles, all that stuff is built to be fast, light, aerodynamic, I mean, all the things that we're trying to get these kids interested in. That's an easy, you know, those dots are pretty easy to connect. So I would say it's, it would be don't try to rely on a lot of the things that maybe are not available to you because everything is available to you. It's like everything in nature and what they're interested in, I guarantee you in some form or fashion, even music today is completely created on, uh, you know, you have, um, you have bands and individuals creating music in their own house on programs that are on a Mac, you know, and these kids know that, you know, they know about these voice enhancers and all those things. That is still related to tech in some form or fashion. So it's really just uh, kind of putting it together, you know, putting those dots together for them. So. Okay, that'll be my first project this year is having my students, the first day they come <laughs> in, write down one thing they're interested in, and then for homework, find the science, technology, engineering, and math that they need in that in that area. Yeah. Give me a start. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's out there, and it's definitely doable. Question way up there. Let's let's see if I can run in my platform shoes. I'm curious about your your t your test audience. Did, how, how well received was that group of teenagers that were outside the room? Not the ones that are interested. How they take it? Your your little bit of branding you use with them. Um, we haven't done full-on research, but we have done testing just with people that we knew and that, one, were good students, but not necessarily what I would consider to be STEM-centric students. And that's part of how we ended up where we are. You know, because again, we can relate this back to a lot of things. And, and, and you, you can see how, you know, how does, um, my, my big questions in the marketing world is, how does Coke sell Coke? I mean, you know, there's no nutritional benefit. It tastes pretty good, you know, but people buy it all over the world, and they do it because they've related it to just having a happy life, you know, that, the, the polar bears. I mean, what do polar bears have to do with Coke, right? <laughs> Seriously. But you show that during Christmas time, and I mean, freaking refrigerators are stocked with it. So you can't explain it. That's the part that's not a science. That's the part that's baffling. You know, if you try to actually figure out why people do the things they do, um, you know, when it comes to marketing and advertising, it'll, it'll really make you not sleep at night. You know, Dodge rebranded their entire company back years ago on the color red and a Ram. That was it. They came out, if you go back and look at their original stuff, they came out with after Dodge was tanking big time, every car and every commercial's red. And that's when they introduced the Ram head and they started really kind of like giving it this um, tough kind of feel, you know? And then recently, um, I think it was Dodge that, that did the uh, Paul Harvey spot during the Super Bowl. And again, they went from kind of being red and the Viper to salt of the earth, right? 
Dodge trucks are for people who you know, work for a living, who have endured a lot of things, and they let somebody else tell that story for them. Similar to letting our artists get kids excited about something we wanted them to get excited about, but we're actually staying pretty far away from it. So when you have Paul Harvey reciting you know, something he gave at a farmer's you know, basic convention, and they're using it for Dodge, it's, pretty, it's kind of ingenious in a lot of ways, but it's by no means science. So. <laughs> um, do you know if there's been any feelers out to public figures like Tony Hawk or Sean White? Or, because we have to have their support if we're going to be pulling Yeah, this I mean, I think that's a great idea. I mean, this, is, um, this presentation was adapted. I did this in 10 minutes. I mean, that was how much time I was allotted. That was like somebody going, can you explain um, you know, quantum physics in five minutes? Uh, you know, in a weird way. It was like, I don't know exactly how to take something as large as STEM and figure out how to possibly show that there's, you know, maybe not really a silver bullet, but a really positive, uh, newer approach to go down. Um, I think you do have to have endorsements. You have to have, you know, some people that are out there, kids are looking up to as role models. I also think that why would you not actually have like an Ignite I team? You know, you can, uh, I've worked with a lot of sponsorships with a lot of athletes and young athletes that are in this kind of world with X Games and Warp Tour, they will ride for you and wear all your stuff and basically say anything you want them to say and understand what you want them to say if you really get them you know, excited about the brand and what it stands for, for nothing. Literally pennies. Because they, again, for them, imagine when you're a kid, you just want to be sponsored. You want to tell your friends, I'm sponsored. They gave me $5 and you know, a six pack of Coke, but I'm sponsored. And that's important, but then again, that's how kids are, and that's the life they live, and that's what we have to understand, and we gotta use it to the best of our ability, so. Any other questions? All right, well thank you everyone, I enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have a great conference while you're here.